I'd like to talk to you today about the verification of citizen captured video. In 2009, the UK's Channel 4 broadcast a video of what appeared to be the Sri Lankan army executing captured Tamil fighters. The conduct in this video, if authentic, would be criminal. However, if authentic being the key. The Sri Lankan government called this video a sinister attempt to bring disrepute to the government, while to the United Nations, this video showed war crimes. Despite extensive forensic analysis by both parties, the authenticity of this footage remains disputed. In 2011, Western media widely broadcast a video alleged to be Syrian soldiers beating detained protesters. However, this footage was actually taken in Lebanon four years earlier. This exemplifies a common way that footage is falsified. The date and location are misrepresented. Another way it's falsified is it could be digitally altered. I think you're likely all familiar with the photoshopped images of the sharks in the flood water following Hurricane Sandy. And yet another way is the scene itself may be staged. This was the Sri Lankan government's argument about the Channel 4 footage. And here you see Syrian activists embellishing a video by adding smoke to simulate a mortar attack. Now, while the belief in falsified footage can have serious adverse consequences, the disbelief in accurate, authentic footage is equally as problematic. Human rights activists, investigators, journalists, and regular citizens are risking their lives every day to capture footage to bring to light the violent and oppressive actions of abusive regimes. There's a wealth of material to be mined from this footage if it can be authenticated. One use of citizen video of particular interest to the Eyewitness Project is as evidence in criminal investigations or trials. Videos can play an important role in holding the perpetrators of atrocities such as genocide, war crimes, or crimes against humanity accountable. Let me give you an example. Thomas Labonga was the leader of an armed faction in the Democratic Republic of Congo. He was indicted for the recruitment and use of child soldiers. In his prosecution before the International Criminal Court, the prosecutor introduced a video showing Labanga giving a speech to a group of young boys at a military training camp. This video demonstrated that Labanga knew that child soldiers were being used. He was convicted of war crimes, and he's currently serving a prison sentence. So there's a number of important initiatives underway addressing this verification of crowdsourced footage, a number of which you're hearing about today. Some look at the verification of the information at open source level, while others are looking at embedding key information at the point of capture. One example of a point of capture project is the Eyewitness Project. Eyewitness is a mobile camera app that records and embeds metadata to facilitate the authentication of the footage and its use by courts. The app records GPS coordinates, time date information, camera movements, and other corroborating data to help confirm where and when the footage was taken. So here's an example of the GPS capture. The image at the top was taken with the eyewitness app, and when the recorded GPS are mapped, it elicits the street view image shown below. The app also calculates a hash value of the pixel count at the point of capture that can be compared with the hash value at the point of receipt. This helps verify that the footage has not been digitally altered. The app user can tag individuals and objects or provide general notes to give more context about the image. They can then transmit the information to a secure repository that will be maintained by the eyewitness organization, thereby creating a trusted chain of custody. The information in the images are stored and transmitted in encrypted format, and once the user has submitted an image to eyewitness, they have the option of sharing a copy of the image more broadly. While this type of tool can contribute to the technology for truth movement, it can't do so unless it's effectively used. So what's needed now is the wide dissemination of these types of tools for the collection of verifiable video. And as Sujarita just explained, improved connectivity and transmission options of the data are essential. And finally, even using such tools, the captured information will require further analysis to verify that the content is being correctly interpreted. This requires collaboration among organizations collecting other types of corroborating data. The citizens on the ground where these abuses are taking place are the first and sometimes the only witnesses to these atrocities. So putting in their hands the tools to collect verifiable video is an important step towards holding the perpetrators of these atrocities accountable 
and hopefully deterring these atrocities in the future. Thank you.